This is my 130 PDS and I've had this a while. And this here is a very nice Pegasus Astro autofocusing unit. Now for my dual telescope project, I need to have two identical telescopes. And essentially that means having an autofocuser on the second telescope. Now these in the United Kingdom are about 250 pounds, which is quite a lot of money, I think. So I'm trying to think if there are better options. The ZWO equivalent of this is also 199 pounds in the United Kingdom, which is quite a lot of money also. So then I was investigating what I should do and I stumbled across a post on Facebook where somebody had used a Gemini autofocuser and it was about 60 pounds. So that sounds really interesting. To give you an idea of what this is the equivalent to, this is a Skywatcher DC motor autofocuser or focuser. And these are about 55 to 60 pounds in the United Kingdom. And they come with a push button unit to allow you to change the focus. You can't really use it very well for autofocus routines because it's a DC motor. It does not have positional information as to whether it's actually reached a position. It just applies a voltage and hopefully the motor turns. Whereas a stepper motor like this in here actually moves by an exact number of steps. So for, I think I paid 65 to 70 pounds for this, including postage and packing and tax. So this effectively gives you full control of your focus and the positional readout from the stepper motor. And also it has a remote control. So you can use it in a similar fashion to a DC motor if you wish to, which is quite clever. You just have to plug a USB power supply, which I'm assuming is five volts. Uh, they're normally five volts. You just have to plug in a USB power supply to make that work. I have actually already unboxed this, but I forgot to turn on my microphone. So the sound was terrible. So I'm doing it again. And here it is. This is the now not unboxed, we're going to pretend Gemini focuser. So in the box, it comes beautifully packaged in a cardboard box, which looks a bit like that. That is how it arrives. And within there, you have some pretty good packaging and a USB lead, which was in that bag. And then there was a cable tie to go with the USB lead. And then we have the actual autofocuser, which is here. And it was in this little plastic bag. There we go. So it has on the back a temperature sensor input, a USB 2 socket, and also an infrared socket for the remote control, which we have. It also came with some mounting hardware, some screws and washers here. Look to be Allen keys. And then we have the infrared sensor, which is there. There is a remote control, which it came with, and a mounting bracket. Now this is much nicer than the one they show on the website. So that's much nicer. That is the mounting bracket. And then it comes with three different size coupling pieces. So they all have different size holes in the back to allow you to connect to whichever size you require on your telescope. So essentially, this is everything that came with the auto focuser. This is the website on AliExpress. Now, it's worth searching for different versions of this because this one here, if you look carefully at what is available with this, you can see there's a temperature sensor there. My one didn't come with a temperature sensor. It came with an infrared sensor for the remote control. So it's worth having a good look just to double check which version that you need to get. 
Now, if you do go for one of these and you want the drivers, you have to scroll down and then you need to click on view more, which is here. And then it shows various shots from Nina, how it's been rigged. And then there is a link to the drivers, which is there and a contact email address there and a Facebook group. Now I've opened up this link, which is here. And you can see there's obviously a flats panel that this particular company make and an EAF. So you then download that folder containing all of the drivers. Once you have downloaded them and you've got the folder here, you have to unzip your folder. So you just right click and then go to extract all. Now I've just set it up to the same location folder on my computer, but in here you now have the different software. Obviously for myself, I need the English software. And this here is the ASCOM driver. So you just need to install that. And then within here, you have another folder which you can unzip. So you extract again, I just extracted it to the same uh, folder. And within here, you have the Gemini console. So I have my Gemini just here, and I'm going to plug it in using the USB lead, which they supplied. So let's see what happens. So it beeps at you, and it now has a little red light, which you can see just there. So that's now powered up. It's all USB powered. And then I'm going to go into Gemini Focus Pro Console. And here it is. Now, when I first did this, it did not find COM port 4. So I had to refresh a few times. And eventually it came up with the correct COM port. So what you do is you just select the COM port and you click connect. There we go. It's now connected. That's very cool. And essentially that's it. It gives you a few options for different speeds and going forwards and backwards, but that's it. It's essentially working, uh, which is really good. So I then thought, let's get this connected in Nina. So I'm now in Nina and I'm going to connect this within Nina. So we go to the focuser and I've already tested because it's obviously there, but what I would do is I would select the ASCOM driver, which is the Gemini Focuser Pro, then go to the settings here. And I know because I connected within the little control panel before that it's COM port 4 and click OK. And then hopefully it should connect. There we go. It has connected and the little red light is on. And if I click on the buttons, it is now moving forwards and it's now moving backwards. So it's very interesting. I have no doubt that somebody's done some very hard work to make this, but for what is essentially sort of 60 pounds, that's a focuser. My last focuser I bought was a ZW01 and it cost me 199 pounds which is quite a lot. And the Pegasus Astro ones are 250 pounds. I'm not saying that's better. I suspect that the components perhaps are uh, slightly cheaper and maybe the motor's not as powerful. It certainly hasn't got Wi-Fi or any of the bells and whistles, but so far that seems very promising. And I haven't found very much about these Gemini uh, focuses. So I'm going to give it a whirl and install this on my dual telescope rig. So I just ran a very quick search in AliExpress to try and find the Gemini focuser. And I found these. It would appear that this is the one I bought and it has the remote control and it doesn't come with the temperature sensor. So if the remote control is more important for you, then that's the one for you to go for. However, if a temperature sensor is more important for you, then a different version would be the one to go for. But this is the one I bought and it arrived really quickly within about a week and a half and it seems to work fine.
some of the parts for the dual telescope project have arrived. I was on Facebook Marketplace and somebody was advertising an Altair 269C color cooled camera, which is identical to the one I already have. And it was an absolute steal. Normally, I think they're about 700 and something pounds. Uh, so normally secondhand, you're looking about 550 to 600. This one, 350 pounds. And it's pretty much immaculate. Uh, it came with a driver CD, but you actually download the drivers and it came with a power supply and the actual camera itself is in very good condition. It's not got the original cover, but at least it's got a cover on the sensor. I've tested it. It works absolutely fine, exactly the same as my other one. So essentially I now have the two cameras which I need for the dual rig. So now I can start putting together the camera, the filter drawer, with the correct backspacing and actually then look at how I can align the two telescopes together on the same object. That's both scopes with their cameras. I've tried to align them as much as I can, but my intention is not to do astronomy tonight, but it's to try and get that little TV aerial there, or maybe the one further away over there, in the images in focus on these two cameras, on these two scopes, and see if I can frame the aerial in a similar fashion on both cameras. So I have now got effectively both telescopes that you can see here effectively looking at that aerial which is just there where my finger is and I've managed to create two different profiles in Nina one for this scope and this focuser and this will be the master scope and then the other for this scope this camera and this focuser and let's quickly dive into Nina and we'll have a look at the framing on these bearing in mind that I'm trying to get them both to see that aerial up there I've now got two sessions of Nina I have this one here which is the master scope and this is where it's pointing at the moment so if I take a quick shot I'm only doing a 0.3 second exposure so it's taken it stretching the image debearing and there we go so we can now see that aerial there now if I go into the other telescope and take a similar duration so we take this shot we can see that the two are not framed together. Now, the object is very close and the scopes are obviously sort of separated like that. So to align them perfectly is going to be difficult anyway. So I now need to look at getting them as close as possible. And as it's getting dark, I can't do any more at the moment, so I won't be able to see my fixed objects. And I'm sure you've all seen this, but uh, Quiv the Lazy Geek has an amazing video about his dual scope setup. So I've installed in the plugins for Nina, I've installed the synchronization 
application. I have no idea how to use this at all, so I need to learn how to do this. So I've got as far as getting two profiles with two cameras. So I've created uh, in options and then profiles, I've got a master profile and a secondary profile here. And then I'm running two incidences of Nina. So this one is the master, this one is the secondary. I've installed the synchronization plugin and I've now been able to connect both focuses, the Gemini focuser and the camera here. And then in this one, in the equipment, I've got the Pegasus Astro focuser and the 269C. I need to print my dew shield for the secondary scope. And there's a little bit of painting that needs to be done. I've collimated the secondary scope, but it still needs the dew heaters around the mirrors. Uh, so I'll have to recollimate once I've fitted those. So I'm getting there. It's baby steps with this one because I think this is going to be quite a complicated project. The lining up of the scopes though is going to be really tricky. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and I'll try and update you with the next episode as soon as I get it made.